Hey, welcome back to the channel. So one of the most misunderstood parts of the iPad experience is multitasking. The iPad is really good as a focused, single-tasking device, but that doesn't mean it's a slouch when it comes to multitasking. Where people generally run into problems is the fact that it doesn't work exactly like multitasking does on a laptop OS like Mac OS or Windows. So what I wanted to do is just try to give you a top to bottom overview of how multitasking works on iPad and how it works differently on different devices and hopefully help clear up some misconceptions about what iPad can and can't do as far as working with multiple apps. So with that, let's jump right into it. So the most straightforward of iPad's multitasking options is Split View. Now, as the name implies, Split View gives the ability to run two apps side by side next to each other. So I'm going to demo Split View in Landscape, but keep in mind, you can do this in Portrait. You just get less room for that second app. It becomes like a small vertical sliver. I don't find it particularly useful, but maybe you will. How do you get into Split View? There are a few ways. So say I'm in Safari and I want to take notes on something I'm reading, doing some research for school or for work. The first way I can get into Split View is via the dock. So if I swipe up from the bottom to pull up the dock, I got the notes app there. I'm going to drag it out of the dock over to the side. And then I've got my Split View, which is great. And I can even, if I really want to, you know, I can pick it up from the top of the screen and switch sides like that. That's probably the most straightforward way to get in a split view. Another way you can do it is via the multitasking menu. So if you look at the top of pretty much every iPad OS window, you have those three dots in the center. And when you tap that, that reveals the multitasking menu. And that gives you your multitasking options for the mode you're in. So again, if I want to get back to my split view, I can tap those three buttons, tap on split view, the app slides over to the side, and then I can just pick notes from the dock, and I've recreated my split. You can even switch their places if you want, again from the multitasking menu. So I tap on the three dots, I'm going to tap on slide over, and then I get to choose whether that app is the left split or the right split. So I move it to the left, it just moves to the left, I can again move it back to the right. Really very easy. The other way you can get into split view is from Spotlight. If you're using a hardware keyboard like the Magic Keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard. So I'm going to take my iPad. I'm going to put it in the Magic Keyboard for this. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and do Command Space to bring up Spotlight. I'm going to type in Notes. Notes comes up along with a number of other things. So what I'm going to do is, with the mouse or trackpad, or you can use your finger, go ahead and drag that icon out of Spotlight, and again, recreate my split view, which is really handy if you're using a mouse and keyboard. And then once you have your split, you can actually, if you choose, you can manage it from the app switcher. So I'm going to swipe up from the bottom, and you'll see I have my open apps, and then I have my split. If I want to get rid of my Notes app and just go back to Safari full screen, I can just swipe up from here. Safari goes back to full screen, and I'm good to go there. So the next multitasking feature in iPad OS is Slide Over. Slide Over gives you access to a floating app window that you can pull over your current apps so that you're able to do things like quickly respond to a message or quickly pull up a note without leaving your current context. I'm in Safari. And I want to pull up that same note I had from before, but this time in slide over. So let's start from the dock. Because again, I can use the dock here and I can grab notes. But instead of dragging it all the way to the side, I just kind of get it close to the side and then I let go. And then it opens in slide over, which again is this little floating window. And then I can move it to either the left or right side of the screen. And when I'm done, I can just slide it off to the side. And now that I have my note in slide over, I can actually go back and forth between slide over and split view. And there's a couple ways to do that. I can do that really just using touch. So I can take my slide over window, 
drag it towards the edge of the screen, you'll see things start to resize. And I'm back in my split view from before. And again, to get back to slide over, if you grab the, the three dots at the top, drag it more towards the other side, I'm back into slide over. Again, I can also use spotlight here if I have an external keyboard attached. Okay, so what I'm gonna do again is hit Command Space to go into Spotlight. I wanna search for the Tips app. And again, I can just drag it out with my mouse or my finger, but just drag it close to the side. Then we have that window in Slide Over. Now, the thing about Slide Over is it's actually not just a floating window, it's a stack of floating windows. So as you add apps to Slide Over, they're just kind of piling up in the stack of apps that you're able to access. So what I can do here is, and from my from my slide over window, if I slide up from the bottom and hold, you'll see they fan out and I get access to a stack of all the slide over apps I've been using. And you can slide between multiple apps. You can actually do more than five or six apps here. You can, again, it'll be a scrolling list. And I'm able just to switch between them very easily. And then another way to get to your slide over apps is through the app switcher. So again, I'm going to slide up from the bottom and hold, get to the app switcher, but I'm going to go right to left and you'll see those same slide over apps fan out there. And you can manage them, you can swipe up to close them if you wish. The more advanced form of multitasking on iPad OS is called Stage Manager. Stage Manager gives you the ability to have up to four apps or four windows on screen at the same time in floating windows. It brings a more laptop-like multitasking paradigm to iPad OS. iPads that can take advantage of this are the M1 and M2 iPad Air, the M1, M2, and M4 iPad Pros, and then the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros, which have the A12X and A12X, Z chips in them, respectively, but you don't get external display support, which is kind of a part of Stage Manager. So how do you get in and out of Stage Manager? Well, the easiest way is from Control Center. So again, pull down from the right here to bring up Control Center, and you'll see you have an icon, this square with, with three other squares on the left. Turn that on, and you're in to Stage Manager. You could also go into settings if you really wanted to, go to multitasking and gestures, and toggle stage manager that way, or turn off multitasking altogether if for some reason you just don't want to deal with it, or you want to give your iPad to someone you don't want to access multitasking and, and potentially not be able to figure it out. So how does stage manager work? So once we're, we're in stage manager now, I can confirm that from control center. So let's go back to Safari. So Safari opens in its own floating window, and I can resize it. There's a drag handle on the right side. You can see with this little line, curved line on the edge. I can resize it with my finger or with a mouse to get it where I want it to be. You'll see on the left you have a recent apps list. And the first thing a lot of people said when they saw Stage Manager was like, wow, that list takes up a lot of space. I don't like that. I wish I can get rid of it. You have a couple options here. In Stage Manager settings, if you go into Control Center and tap and hold on Stage Manager, you have the option to turn off either or both the dock and the recent apps list. If I uncheck this here, it goes away and comes back. What I find though is that if you just get your window close to the list, it disappears on its own. So you really don't have to turn it off. I mean, you can if you want, but it really, it only takes up space when there's nothing else there. If you put something there, it doesn't take up the space. So not really a big deal in my mind. How do we build our workspace? This is going to sound familiar. So I want to start putting apps in here. I'm going to start with a dock. So I want to bring in notes. I'm going to slide up from the dock. Notes opens in its own window. Safari kind of takes the back seat there. My grab handle's moved. It moves kind of between the left and right side, depending on 
where it is. So I can resize my notes window. I'm going to make it smaller here. And I can, of course, just tap between notes and Safari. Let's bring in some other apps. I'm actually going to pull in, and you can see in the recent apps list, I have messages here. So I'm going to pull in messages. Okay, that's my third app. And let's see, what else do I want to pull in? We'll pull in, oh, let's say tips. Resize that. Now I've got four open apps that are all live in my workspace. Nothing's, you know, suspended or background. These are live apps. So what happens if I try to pull in a fifth app? Well, if I pull in, let's say, Delta, actually I'll pull in music from the recent apps list. I pull that in, you'll see tips move from my workspace to, to the recent apps list, which is actually kind of surprising because I think the oldest app in your workspace is supposed to get pulled to the recent apps list but that did not happen in this case. But basically, so the moral of the story is once you get more than five windows, one of them gets evicted to the recent apps list and gets backgrounded. So you also have a few other options as to how to build your workspace. I want to just have notes for a minute because notes is multitasking aware. If an app chooses to and properly supports multitasking on iPad OS, you can actually have multiple windows of the same app. I feel like it works best in Stage Manager. For example, I can, on my notes list here, if I tap and hold, I can drag out individual notes into windows, up to four again, and access them like that, which could be pretty handy. Well, how do you know if an app supports pulling out content into multiple windows like Notes does and Safari does? Well, you mostly really don't. It's really just kind of, I find, kind of a trial and error thing, unfortunately. But that's not too dissimilar to something like Mac OS or Windows. Let me come out of Stage Manager for a minute. And I want to show this working here as well. I'm going to do it with Safari. So I've got three tabs here. And for example, in standard split view, slide over multitasking, I can, I can take a tab, drag it over to the side, and I've got my split with two Safari windows instead of Safari and Notes. So that's an option you have too. And while we're on the topic of multi-window, it's probably a good time to talk about the shelf. So what is the shelf? If I pull up Safari, you see along the bottom here, I can see all my open windows, and that area is called the shelf. So if an app supports multi-window and has multiple windows open, if you open the app, you're able to see a list of all the open windows, this kind of horizontal list of all your open windows, and you can switch between them or manage them here if you want to get rid of one, just swipe it off. And then to get rid of the shelf, you can just tap anywhere in the app, and then it kind of disappears. You can also, of course, like it implies here, you get an option to create a new window. So I'm going to tap here and it open a new Safari window. So now that's my third Safari window. Let's go to Google. And if you want to access the shelf while you're in an app, the best way I found to do it is from the dock. Just pull up the dock, tap on Safari again, and the shelf comes back. So I want to take a minute at the end here to talk briefly about external display support, which is tied to Stage Manager. So when Apple added Stage Manager to iPad OS, they also gave us proper external display support for the first time. Up to that point, when you plug in your iPad through a display, all it would do would just mirror the iPad display in its aspect ratio on your external display, which means you usually had black bars and it was really not a great experience. If you have an iPad that does not have an M-series chip, this is still your experience today. External DisplayPort on iPad OS is not the same as it is on a laptop OS like Windows or Mac OS. You have to think of that display as pretty much just extra space for your iPad. There's no desktop on that display. You can't put icons on that display. You can't put files in that display. It's literally just extra space to spread out your windows.
The nice thing about external display support if you're using Stage Manager is it doubles the number of active apps or windows you can have running at one time, meaning that when you're connected, you can have four apps open on your iPad and four apps open on the external display, and they're all running live, nothing is background and nothing is paused. In my mind, there's really two ways to work with external displays. The first is just what I described, where you have Stage Manager turned on on the iPad, and you have you know, your eight windows across both displays. You can work with it pretty much like you would assume you're able to drag windows between the iPad and the, and the display and back and forth. Um, or you could use the multitasking menu here. If you access the multitasking menu, you'll see a new option in Stage Manager that says either move it to iPad or move it to display, depending on what direction you're going. But the way I like to work is actually to turn off Stage Manager on the iPad and just plug it into my monitor. What that means is on the iPad, I'll just have standard multitasking and then I can use Stage Manager on the external display. What I usually end up doing is just throwing my music on the iPad or a podcast on the iPad and just leave that there. And that's probably because of the way I traditionally like to work. When I work on my work laptop, I always use it closed. I only want one display. And since iPad OS doesn't give us an option to work in something akin to a clamshell mode, this is the best I can kind of do. And it works well enough. So I guess the takeaway there is there's a little bit of flexibility in how you can work with external displays and multitasking with your iPad. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this overview of multitasking on the iPad. I hope in some way you've been able to take something from this and have a better understanding of how you can multitask on your iPad. So if you made it to the end of the video, thank you, I appreciate it. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, that would help me and the channel out a bunch. Make sure to follow me on social media at SlatePad and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.